Hey everyone, my name is Rui and we are here. This is going to be week number one of the MPL Majors. And uh, thank you guys so much for support. And thank you so much to Rogue, to Greg, for all the admins that uh, promoted me from the MPL Miners. This was a whole lot of fun. And uh, just going through all this, I can tell this league is going to be a really fun one. I, Despite my weird draft, um, I did have a draft analysis go out yesterday. So please do watch that if you want any more information about my draft. But uh, overall... This was a match that was really difficult for me to get through, right? So uh, this match actually happened the day after I just gotten home from PAX East. And not only that, but I was miserably sick, right? So I really did want to live com this, but I felt awful. I felt completely awful. And I knew that my throat was not going to be able to um, go through that much talking because I uh, I think I had tried to record something earlier that day, and I first of all, I sounded awful, but I, my throat was struggling through that entire experience. So I ended up having to post comment, but I'm going to show off the matchup right here. These are the six that I brought, six that he brought. And again, a lot more on my team options are going to be in that draft recap, so please do check that out. But uh, I do have the Megalodios, I do have the Scizor, Noivern, Decidueye, uh, Don Fan, and the Alolan Persian. He has a very, very scary team. I did not expect this to win this match at all. Uh, not only because he has such a scary team, but because I was so sick and I was feeling just so tired and out of it from PAX East. But uh, I'm just going to get right into the match. I do want to say, please do stay around for the end of this match because the ending of this match is one of the wildest endings to the match I've ever uh, kind of experienced. So please, please, please do check that out. And uh, also one more thing. Uh, I've made hundreds of YouTube videos, right? but I've never once asked for a like, so like this video, I guess, if uh, you wanted to. I want to see if it genuinely does make a difference, but regardless, I lead off with the Persian. I kind of did expect him to want to lead off with um, a Mew, so I kind of wanted to threaten Taunt at least, or be able to knock something off. I do go for knockoff turn one. Uh, he reveals to be Rocky Helmet, and goes for Rocks turn one, so already, I'm not in a great position. I didn't pack Taunt on this set, which I probably should have. I get that now, but um, I didn't, so I do um, get a little bit back with leftovers, and I just want to pivot the heck out. I kind of did expect him to just want to switch out. I wasn't too, too sure what he wanted to do in the situation, but regardless, there was no reason for my um, for my uh, Persian to want to stay in there. I go into my Decidueye, I take the rocks damage, whatever it is. Um, I'm immune to the Aura Sphere. Okay, this is interesting, because uh, I, did not, I definitely did not notice this when the battle happened. I'm genuinely noticing this for the first time. I didn't know he had an Aura Sphere. Or, I didn't know the Aura Sphere was his fourth move for the entire match. So, watch the rest of this match, uh, like me, not knowing that, right? Uh, wow, okay. He goes into his Torkoal. I, uh, end up going into my Dawn Fan. And, um... I guess it was a double on my part. I guess I knew that this Torkoal was going to come in, so, I mean... Good job, me, I guess. But um, at this point, I kind of did feel like he was going to um, want to solar beam me. I knew that there wasn't much that I could do, and I felt like um, rocks were going to be more important than any type of damage onto this Dawn Fan that uh, I could take. But I knew that I could take it. And regardless, I think I think I was up in starting range. I'm not. I, I don't quite remember. But oh, I didn't even mention I'm on the other side of this match, right? So I'm the I'm the trainer with the Dawn Fan. Uh, I'm gonna probably edit something in about that it's okay but uh, at this point I kind of had to worry about him wanting to go for another solar beam I ended up going into um the Neuvern and flamethrower still does a heck ton of damage I guess it's in Sun I guess it just does that much damage but it's not this moment right I really wanted to drop a Draco or do something against this dang Torkoal I'm pretty sure this was a Scarf Neuvern if I remember correctly but I really want to do something as a Scarf Torkoal. I'm going to leave both of our Pokepays down in the description. Um, so you can calc out whatever you want to. You can figure out whatever you want to do. Uh, you can see how bad my team building was um, in my tired Pax East brain. But um, I really did expect him to want to preserve this Torkoal. Uh, it baffled me. The fact that he held his ground with this Torkoal for so long. Like, even um, staying in on my Dawn Fan, like, Dawn Fan could have gotten a fat Earthquake off on this thing. So, just this whole um, back and forth with this Torkoal staying in for so long, I did not expect this at all. And I just let this Torkoal do so much damage to my team overall, right? Even here, I think I expected this uh, Torkoal to want to switch out, and that's why I wanted to knock something off. But I end up knocking off the Torkoal, which really doesn't do much for me in the longer run of the game. But um, I really 
thought that he would value his Torkoal because his Torkoal really is a fantastic kind of uh, counterweight to a lot of my offensive pressure, right? And I guess he didn't know that my um, Latios was a Dragon Dancing Latios, so I guess it makes more sense that he was kind of playing loose with his Torkoal, but uh, it, honest to God, just didn't make sense to me why he was so keen on preserving the Torkoal and just letting it sit on the field, or keen on attacking the Torkoal and just letting it sit on the field for as long as it did, but honestly, what I end up doing is like sacking half my half my HP to this thing because I just keep switching in and out, and I end up um eventually switching into this thing just to get a free switch in, right? At this point, the sun's down, so now Don Fan can really start to do something here, right? We do take rocks damage, but uh, what this is gonna let me do is get some damage off with this earthquake now that i know for sure that, that he's not gonna like do anything crazy and just take these earthquakes i guess um but he goes for flamethrower now something you can't see because uh the sides are reversed is that i live this on one hp which is i mean I, I guess it doesn't matter too too much but it really helped out my morale because now he's gonna switch out he's gonna think that i want to uh, earthquake again and he's gonna go into the rotom wash but at this point, I'm free to sack this Dawn fan, and I end up going for that Rapid Spin, right? So no matter what, I feel like I've done something in this match, right? I feel like I've gotten a little bit of advantage in this match, and that's so huge for my morale at this point, because I'm sick, I feel terrible. I cannot express how terrible I feel. I t I'm tired, I'm sick, and I was already convinced going into the match that I was going to lose. Oh, also fun fact, this was happening, um, this match was happening while I was half paying attention to the Happy live stream. So, I, I guess that doesn't really matter for any other things, but, um... That's funny to me, at least. In any case, um, I let him take out the Don Fan. That's fine. I don't care about the Don Fan at this point. But at this point, it's really starting to sink in that I could potentially get 6 0 especially when he brings in this Gudra right now. Um, because I try to do some damage to this Gudra, and at first, my first fear was that he brought this in just just to um, just for Sap Zipper, and that was gonna. I think that would have like morally broken me, right? But. Uh, it's not Sapsip, we do a decent amount of damage. This thing ends up being assault vested, it's fine. But, regardless, um, I don't say, and he reveals Gooey, which is going to be interesting for me to keep in the back of my head for later on in the match. I go into, um, I go into Scizor, because I wanted to deal some damage to it, and I honestly thought that he was going to go Ice Beam, because I didn't think that he would want to Fire Blast. He was either going to Fire Blast or Ice Beam in my head, right? And I thought he was going to want to Ice Beam, because two of my mods in the back were the, um... Noivern and the Latios, and it deals super effective damage to the to the uh, Decidueye as well, so because of that, I thought he would be more likely to go for the Ice Beam than the Fire Blast, but he ends up calling it co completely correctly. Goes for the Fire Blast on the incoming Scizor, just straight Okos me, straight destroys me, and I'm thinking now that my only chance is to just uh, go into my uh, Noivern and uh, drop a Draco. Now, here's an, now, this was an interesting moment, right, because my thinking was that I was either going to drop a Draco on something on his side of the field, but if he stays in, when I saw him take it, I was mortified, right? Because at this point, I'm really thinking I'm going to get 6 0 But the fact that he had to drop a Draco on me means that if he wants to drop a Draco on my um, Latios, I either get a free Dragon Dance up or he switches out and I get a free Dragon Dance up regardless. So at minus 2, that still does so much damage. That does a mind-blowing amount of damage for minus 2 uh, Gudra, but... I really wanted to go for a second Dragon Dance. I desperately wanted to go for a second Dragon Dance. But at this point, I knew I couldn't. Oh, also, I forgot to um, Egg Evolve. It didn't matter for the match. We, we, we both agreed that it didn't matter for the match. But I am truly sorry about that. That was just me being sick, me not paying attention. Um, and honestly, yeah, this is a situation where I would have gone for Dragon Claw just mindlessly. But the fact that he revealed Gooey meant that I had to go for Earthquake. I was honestly really afraid because I would forgotten in the moment that I had Earthquake on this set. And I thought to myself... Oh, wait, um, oh, wait, do I have to hit this thing and give up my speed boost to Gooey? But then I looked at my set once, uh, once I was able to, and, uh, I had Earthquake, and I was so relieved. And then, I get it, I get a straight Oko on this Rotom Wash, and then, okay, now I'm thinking, okay, this thing's gonna quick attack me. But, uh, after Rocks, we did some calcs after this, right? Uh, again, we both gave each other our teams, our, our pace, and they're both gonna be down in the description, you can... You can check these numbers as, as much as you want. But, um, 
he was banded and he did not want to band himself into quick attack because the last mon in the back for me was uh decidui so i don't know decidui could have gotten a tailwind up and then i could have started doing something i don't know what the thought process was exactly but um him not going for that i had like i believe it was a 50 50 it was a straight 50 50 chance for me to oko uh after rocks so i just start picking up ko's left and right and this Latios, she's just doing the thing, right? And honestly, okay, so I know I played this badly. I know that for whatever reason I sacked like half my uh, health to this dang Torkoal, but I didn't know in the back of my head that I, I, I knew in the back of my head the things that I had to weaken, and I knew in the back of my head that um, Latios potentially wins this match if the things that, if certain things get weakened down. And um, like I said, I knew the things that I had to get weakened. He brought out the things that had to get weakened. I was able to weaken them, which, again, is why I played so badly against, against Torkoal, because I thought the Torkoal was going to be this one Mon that would want to save as a counterweight to something like my Latios just tearing through his team, right? Because um, if he had kept his Torkoal healthy, Latios, or uh, sorry, uh, Torkoal should take a plus one Earthquake, I believe. And I don't know if, what type of coverage it had to come back with, but um, after that... After that, um, Draco damage, it looks to me like maybe a, maybe a sun boosted flamethrower could do something. I don't know. He could have had HP ice. I'm not too, too sure. But, um, again, that's one of the things that really baffled me about that Torco play, but, um, and why I played so badly against it. But all the things that, um, was, were real impediments to me doing things with Latios, in particular, the, the, um, the Torkoal and, and and the Gudra, they all they both ended up getting weakened and allowing my Latios to kind of bust through in this uh, wild way. And also, the Diggersby uh, was banded, did have quick attack, could have taken me out. Um, but the fact that the Sidewise was in the back, that was just a bit of luck that I didn't plan on it. it and it just came out of, of a bad switch on my part into Scizor because I thought I could call an incoming Ice Beam correctly. But uh, regardless, that's going to be a 6 KO sweep for the boy Mega Latios my first pick uh at that second last position and uh what can i say this is what i mean when mega Latios with the dragon dance instead of Latios just made it so much more fun to me in building this was a really fun match shout outs to my opponent shout out to arashi i apologize again for keeping you up so late all the things that i put you through just in general i was really bad about scheduling this match because it was a pack season and i was really sick and tired and not in the best shape but uh, i appreciate you for everything um, and again i appreciate the mpl just in general thank you guys so so much but with that that's going to be week one of the mpl thank you guys so much for watching and i'll be once again out